and they're ready to surrender. आईएनए के बागी फौजियों पर अंग्रेज देशद्रोह का मुकदमा चलाएंगे। उन तीनों के बचने के चांसेस कम हैं। ये कोई आम केस नहीं, कोर्ट मार्शल है। बोला भाई एक केस आप कांग्रेस के लिए नहीं, सुभाष बोस के लिए लड़ी। लुटेनेंट गोबाक सिंह डिलन, कैप्टन शाह नवाज खान, कैप्टन पी के सेगा, सेक्शन 41, वेजिंग वॉर अगेंस्ट द किंग you are charged with murder. Do you plead guilty to the charges read out? If there is a force to fight for freedom, then its name is the name of the Hind Forge. The safety, honor and welfare of your country comes first, always. British Indian Army hand you over to the Japanese Imperial Army. Hindustan and the Angrezes were broken down and broken. If something is up and down, the country will be a problem. Now, the people will not leave any English. Night and night, you will be able to stop the freedom of your country. The English officers have not been able to do our freedom. So, what can they be able to do our freedom? Today, the Hindustani force has its own real purpose. The freedom of Hindustan. You give me the blood. I will give you the freedom. ये मुकदमा पूरी इंडियन नेशनल आर्मी का है क्योंकि हमने वो दिन देखा है जब हमें ऐसा लगा था कि हमने हिंदुस्तान को वाकई आजाद कर दिया देश की आजादी की लड़ाई कोर्ट में लड़ी जा रही है और इस वक्त पूरा देश एक साथ तैनात है This trial and its judgment shall be remembered throughout history. Hello and welcome. I'm Amritan Shirai and you're watching Law of the Land on Raj Sabha TV. Today we bring to you the Surrogacy Regulation Bill 2016. To discuss the issue, I have with me I should have had with me Mrs. Lalita Kumar Manglam, Chairperson, National Commission for Women, but she could not make it due to reasons that were not given. And Dr. Rita Bakshi, Founder and Chairperson of International Fertility Center. Now for the highlights. The Surrogacy Regulation Bill 2016 bans commercial surrogacy and allows ethical altruistic surrogacy. The bill seeks to regulate surrogacy by constituting surrogacy boards at national and state level. Unrelated women will not be allowed to act as a surrogate mother for the infertile couple. The Surrogacy Regulation Bill 2016 bans commercial surrogacy but allows surrogacy for non-commercial needs. The bill attempts to end exploitation of surrogate mothers and seeks to protect the rights of children born out of surrogacy. The bill seeks to regulate surrogacy by constituting surrogacy boards at national and state level. Due to the rise in the incidence of unethical practices of surrogacy, exploitation of surrogate mothers, abandonment of child born out of surrogacy and import of human embryos and gametes, it has become necessary to enact a legislation to regulate surrogacy services in the country. Uh, it's a very good move and I think it was a need of the hour. Uh, the, the surrogacy had been uh, grossly misused in our country and if you look at internationally most of the country have banned commercial surrogacy including most of the developed countries had this been a very very lucrative business why would these countries would ban the surrogacy the surrogacy regulation bill 2016 allows ethical altruistic surrogacy in which a surrogate is given no financial gains for carrying a child 
except the medical expenses incurred on her and the insurance cover for her. Surrogacy will be allowed to intending infertile married couples between the age of 23 to 50 years for female and 26 to 55 years for males. The intending couples should have been legally married for at least five years to undertake surrogacy. The couples going for surrogacy will have to be Indian citizens. Banning commercial surrogacy in totality is a very drastic decision. It really, you know, sort of cuts away any possible uh, scope for uh, an XYZ trying to take a surrogate mother uh, and having a baby through surrogacy because it's not very easy to find blood relatives or close relatives or friends who would be able to offer surrogacy for somebody. Due to lack of legislation, the practice of surrogacy has been misused by the surrogacy clinics which led to extensive use of commercial surrogacy and unethical practices in the area of surrogacy. The Law Commission in its 228th report recommended prohibition of commercial surrogacy by enacting legislation. The Surrogacy Regulation Bill 2016 was introduced by Minister of Health and Family Welfare, Mr. J.P. Nadda, in Lok Sabha on November 21, 2016. The surrogacy business in India has grown into a multi-crore industry. Although the bill aims to effectively protect the rights of surrogate mothers and children born through surrogacy, but it also hurts the sentiments of those infertile parents who wish to have biological children but are unable to find surrogates within the close relations. With cameraman Chetan Sharma, Dipali Pandit for Rajya Sabha Television. Before going in for surrogacy, a certificate of eligibility and certificate of essentiality is what is required for the person who wants to adopt. Ma'am, um, uh, my question to you is, uh, the issues that the bill talks as far as certificate of eligibility is concerned, that first, the person must be Indian citizens and married for five years, one. Second, it says they do, do not have surviving children, biological, adopted or surrogate, which means they can't, only those parents who don't have biological children or have not adopted kids. And goes on to elaborate more. But on these two points, what's the purpose? What is the government planning, I mean, what is the attempt of the government to keep out from uh, the surrogacy uh, activity all throughout India? So, uh, I think in a world which is globalized where, you know, people have can reach out to each other in any emergency or any other way, uh, it this does not make sense from, a, you know, fr from my point of view in any way. Mm -hmm. uh, keeping out people today, if somebody, if I want to get a surgery done in US, there's nothing stopping me. Similarly, if a US person would like to come here and get a surrogacy or you know any other thing done it does not make sense why should this particular uh, benefit be only for indian citizens okay. i i think it should be especially uh, i'm also against because uh, adoption is allowed to foreigners mm -hmm. adoption is allowed to singles mm -hmm. now the the concept that you know people are coming here who may be terrorists who may be you know not the right people who yeah. come here does not make sense because if why can't we make laws as stringent as in adoption and yet let the foreigners come here and do surrogacy? Ma'am, don't you think it, the attempt of the state, of the government, is to regulate or keep out the commercial aspect of a good deed from, I mean, surrogacy is a good deed. Absolutely. That is done to provide children or kids to people who do not have their own or, and would like to have someone Absolutely. of their own. Absolutely. Okay? Now, if that is the purpose, then isn't the state right in its uh, decision to clarify that only this section can do it in order to negate any chances of commercial exploitation of poverty-stricken Indian citizens. So, uh, what I think is that commerce is a part which I think even in UK, where surrogacy has been there for so long, they do allow compensation. You know, you want to use 
if you allow a compensated surrogacy, don't say it's altruistic. I don't think there's anything free today. If you want to get anything done with your relative, I don't think you'll do it free or you'll will, you will compensate her in some other manner. So if you allow compensation of the working hours that she's lost, of the effort the family has put in, of the medical expenses, the food and all that together, that's okay. I don't think anybody's against that. Even all of us doctors were waiting for this regulation to come by, but we were not. This is like a ban. Mm. I think, clearly speaking, this is more like saying that please don't do it at all. Correct, correct. You know, correct. And that also that's was, the attempt. That's the attempt. Mm. Now, finding a close relative, to be truthful and honest, I don't think is going to be easy for any single person. And they have not defined the close relative. We mm. don't know the closeness that they are looking at. But I think. It, in today's world, with nuclear families, with small, uh, you know, I don't think it's going to be easy. So it's like saying, please don't do it. I think they should have allowed non-people, uh, I mean, not related to them. That's the one part I feel, and allowed compensation. Ma'am, uh, tell me, my question to you is, uh, how do you go ahead with an altruistic or, let's say, uh, allow surrogacy and still not in, I mean, still ensure that the commercial exploit exploitation of someone's economic status because of someone's economic status does not happen how do you do this if you don't if you don't write it this way then what do you think is the way it should have been written according to you so uh, i think uh, to be again honest uh, economic status varies everywhere Today, if you are getting work done from somebody who is economically deprived than you are, I mean, you do allow that. Yes. I mean, if you say, do you call that exploitation? No. You call it, she's doing her work, I'm doing my work, I'm paying for it, and that's it. I think, the you know, we want to see the glass half empty or half full is what you want to really see. If you say that, yes, the person is economically deprived and yet... You know, you are compensating her. You know, she's making some amount of money. You can always define that. Regulation could have so been... So, in a way, okay. you are for commercial surrogacy. I would have said yes. To, because this, uh, you know, is, is, and, and I think close relative does not make sense from anywhere. Because I think the baby is forever going to be related to the person who is, who is, you know, giving birth. And suppose something happens to her own child. She will always try to claim uh, some, uh, you know, uh, contact with the baby that is there. Also, breastfeeding has always been a big issue. You know, if your relative is there and uh, you, you will like her to breastfeed also because everybody knows breast milk is a great, uh, you know, source of nutrition correct, for correct, the correct. babies. Now, you putting that close relative, whether it is sister or sister-in-law, that probably would come out. The, 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 the closest that would be at your own sister or sister-in-law. Now, in a way, the brother or the, you know, is going to force... It's going rather it's going to be i think in a more negative manner he's going to force her because there's no other way you can uh, get, get a surrogate so he's going to force her she's still going to be forced he'll probably make her breastfeed also so those the, the contacts that we are trying to avoid in a case like these are going to be even more so, and she's always going to claim and you know i don't think it'll ever be clear at all so uh, what this bill essentially does is tries and restricts the surrogacy activity to such an extent that people are forced to move towards adoption and not opt for surrogacy because there are several levels of compliance and certification that the uh, adopting parents would like. Is that your point? I, I, I agree with that. And adoption, I think, is a great, great idea for people who want to adopt. In a very democratic setup, we, we should give everything. Yes, people who want to adopt, go ahead. If you're looking for your genetic babies, go ahead. So, you know, it's like a it's like a bus. So, all the options, according to you, should there. be open. Should be there. And I agreed. You know, you could have made a, a national board where the parent can go there. They will only tell them, hey, why don't you go and adopt? Let them put them through adoption. If still, somebody is still wanting their own genetic babies, why not? Ma'am, but all other aspects may be convincing, but the state's concern was simple. Misuse of surrogacy. How do you regulate that? And also, the clinics, the doctors, the entire uh, setup that yeah. is associated with that activity, yeah. somewhere or the other ends up exploiting the system for its needs and for financial gains. Now, how do you, 
how can you manage that yeah now you know because see when whenever something starts it does make, it's unregulated regulations could have been that you know you make a central authority the parents can come there let them verify there are always ways to verify that the parent is okay then the surrogate can also go there she can be registered there that she's not done surrogacy many many times once in her lifetime perfectly okay she with her aadhar pan whatever yeah, you know yeah. she gets registered the money can also go to the board the the board can pay up you know to the surrogate to be sure that you know the money is in her hands the bank accounts clinics like us we already have bank account anybody can go and check it goes in her name she collects it then nobody else can take it but then to regulate all every single clinic in the uh, uh, in india you can do that let the money be there let Got it, it be paid there that's it time for us to head into a break when we return we will talk about the other provisions of the bill Welcome back. The Surrogacy Regulation Bill 2016 provides that intending couples shall in no condition abandon the child born out of surrogacy procedure. The bill ensures that the child born out of surrogacy procedure gets same rights and privileges as that of a child born biologically. The bill provides that the surrogate mother should be a close relative of the intending couple. The surrogate mother has to be a married woman with a child of her own. The bill also specifies that the age of the surrogate mother should be between the age of 25 to 35 years. It also provides that the surrogate mother shall be allowed to act as a surrogate mother only once. Only people who really need surrogacy will be coming forward. This is because people who do surrogacy for social indication will not be able to have surrogacy. And secondly, uh, most of the patients who require surrogacy uh, will be, you know, will be uh, motivating their family members and the friends to come forward and help. So it will be most of a social cause rather than a business. If somebody wants to, because if you're not compensating a lady for to be a surrogate, the money part is totally taken care of from this bill. The bill prohibits any person, organization, surrogacy clinic, laboratory or clinical establishment of any kind to undertake commercial surrogacy or issue advertisement regarding commercial surrogacy. It prevents abandonment of child born through surrogacy or exploitation of the surrogate mother. The bill also prohibits selling of human embryo or importing of human embryo for the purpose of surrogacy. Everybody wants that there should be a bill, there should be a regulation, but a regulation which absolutely takes away the rights, takes away fair compensation for women who are doing the procedure, that is something which is absolutely opposed. The bill says only your sister or your sister-in-law can do it. If, if I have a sister, her age has to be specifically between 25 to 35. She uh, has to come with me to the court. We have to take a permission from the court. Then we have to go and get ourselves certified as infertile people. No doctor can do that uh, certification because these kind of things just don't exist. Violation of the law will attract punishment with imprisonment of minimum 10 years and maximum fine up to 10 lakh rupees. The bill provides for registration of surrogacy clinics. This will be possible only after the appropriate authority is satisfied that the clinic is in a position to provide facilities and can maintain equipment and standards. The clinic will also be checked whether they have a specialized manpower, physical infrastructure and diagnostic facilities. The bill by allowing only altruistic surrogacy leaves out a huge section of the society comprising of single people who do not wish to get married and the LGBT community. It will have a huge impact as it will become illegal for clinics to practice surrogacy as business which would give a downfall to the surrogacy industry and might give rise to the adoption cases. With cameraman Raj Thakur, Dipali Pandit for Rajya Sabha Television. The centre and the state will appoint an appropriate authority within 90 days of the bill becoming a law. The functions of this authority will include, among other things, granting, suspending or cancelling registration of surrogacy clinics, enforcing standards and taking action against breach of provision. <laughs> 
Ma'am, this sector, this surrogacy sector, the uh, entire all across India, how big do you think is it? How many clinics would there be if just a, uh, I mean, a vague estimate or? Uh, I think uh, IVF itself is, you know, on the rise and uh, around, uh, I would say that um, if there are about 800 clinics all over India doing IVF, then about um, uh, 200 would be doing surrogacy. Surrogacy. And how does the system work? I mean, how does, how is the surrogate mother identified as of now before the law yeah is... so the law of course says the art banks have to come up and they are the ones who will be uh, recruiting and uh, investigating diagnosing and you know making them good enough for at the moment they are agents and they are people some some are banks some are agents who get the surrogates uh, now the only uh, thing that we uh, we we as uh, you know ethical clinics are looking at is that the money is not laundered only to the broker or the agent who gets that and the surrogate gets her fair share mm -hmm. and the only way that one can do is segregate the money that the agent of course whatever effort he is putting in he gets it and the rest of it goes into her bank account and she can withdraw from there. Ma'am, what's the understanding between the agent and the surrogate mother? Has, has I, mean, uh, I mean, any kind of a work or if effort gone into understanding? Is it purely an economical uh, deal or is, does there, is there any other reason also? So, uh, it's uh, not at all only economical. I mean, that is a, a part, you know, the effort that the agent is going to, you know, the agent takes, you know, for getting her from home to here all the time, looking after her, seeing that she's not undergoing any abuse whatsoever, uh, looking at, you know, any other problem that she may be having. So, he deserves a small share. Mm -hmm. the, the, the worry of the government and the worry that some uh, may be happening is that the large share is taken by him and a small share goes to the surrogate. Mm -hmm. So, to see that, I think the only way is to open bank accounts to all of them. I don't think these women are very, very intelligent. Lawyers should be there, lawyers appointed for the surrogate herself. And for the intended couple, I, I get it, separate. Ma but what's the reason for any person, any individual, any uh, surrogate to come forward and offer herself for the entire... One is money. Yes. Is there any other reason? I think uh, uh, somewhere philanthropy, in, especially in a country like ours, also plays a role. Uh, I think doing one good deed, you know, in, in, and giving a baby to somebody who is infertile, I don't think can be anything better. Somewhere they are counseled also and they are, they are, uh, the thought is also there that you know that if they are doing this, their own babies and their own homes and their own will be blessed. What, what about cases where the child born out of the entire procedure is not able-bodied, is specially able, is probably not what the parents were looking for in a situation like that, is it that the child, children or the uh, kids born out of that system are abandoned? And the cases have been pretty high. And I don't think they have been high at all. Let me say the RTI has been filed uh, to the government and the government of India has written that not a single case, you know, that you can, you can see that uh, on the RTI, they've written not a single case of exploitation has been brought to their notice. Uh, if uh, most of the abnormalities are detected during the antenatal examination, rarely happens. But in, it's not common. So it's in a rare case that it may happen. Yes, uh, cases may be there like that. And in that case, the government has made a law that, you know, if within a month the baby is not taken by the parents, then the baby will be given to an orphanage. But let me tell you, it is extremely rare, like in any other antenatal no, Even if one case, ma'am, yes. don't you think yes, that's... I agree. I that's agree on a, that. So we really were looking, we were looking for regulation on that, and I'm very happy that they have, you know, some good points of the bill are the insurance that they have given to the surrogates, the the that they have made once in a lifetime, so they can't do surrogacy again and again, and that so, ma that no but, child will be abandoned. But you ever. do agree on this point. Yes. There are certain and unethical aspects that can't really be tackled without banning. Uh, commercial activity. Do you 
No, personally, I don't think that you, you can. There are so many commercial activities that go on, you know, whether it's a real estate bill or any other bill. It's not that you have to ban things. You just have to put them in place. You just have to make things mandatory. So That's the clothes, it. as far as the close relatives are concerned, ma'am, I think the rules and regulations will provide for it. They will try and give a broader uh, definition yes. so that uh, more and more, more people, people can, can take, take benefit of it. Absolutely. Uh, that's the uh, note at which we leave it. Uh, moving on, my colleague Depali Pandit spoke to Dr. Swa Soumya Swaminathan, Director Gen General, Indian Council of Medical Research, and tried to get her point of view. The bill prohibits commercial surrogacy. How do you look at it? Yes, this bill was basically um, designed to protect uh, vulnerable women who are currently being exploited by the situation in India, where India had literally become the commercial surrogacy hub of the world because so many countries in the world uh, either completely disallow surrogacy or ban commercial surrogacy. So we found a lot of people coming to India and obviously we have a lot of poor women who are willing to undergo this uh, pregnancy for the sake of a good payment that they get. And uh, what people don't realize is that pregnancy also has its own health risks and complications. And when something goes wrong, either with the baby or the mother, then there's nobody really to take responsibility. Bill excludes unmarried citizens and LGBT community from surrogacy. How do you look at it? In India, as you know, um, gay marriages are not recognized as marriages. Uh, single people who are gay or, or heterosexual or, or lesbian are actually allowed to adopt children. So there is an option available to such people to have a child through adoption. But it was felt that to undergo surrogacy, you need, uh, you know, because you're really utilizing services of the womb of another woman. And therefore, the benefits should really outweigh the risks that are associated with this process. And therefore, it should be kept limited. However, I think these are things which are still going to be debated. The bill has gone to parliament and the views of uh, many different stakeholders would be expressed. And we'll have to see what the final version of the bill says. Thank you, ma'am, for joining us on this discussion. It's time for us to end the show. You can email your suggestions and comments to law.rstv at gmail.com. You can also watch our shows on the RSTV page of YouTube. We'll be back with a new issue and a new episode. Keep watching. Raj Sabah TV.